with the animation set up in the last video, now it's time to actually connect things together because currently all we do is show our um, new text on screen. We don't actually use it for anything. First step is going to be to make sure that that interaction text isn't always visible on the screen when we hit play. So I'm going to go into my blueprints folder, open up my UI, open up the crosshair. And heading over to the blueprint graph, I'm going to use the uh, begin play node, which on um, a widget is called event construct. It does exactly the same thing as the event begin play. This is called when the widget is created. I'm going to use this to take the text and set its uh, alpha transparency to zero. It's currently not set as a variable here in the details panel on the right hand side, so you can't edit it inside your blueprints unless it is set up as a variable. But in order to do that, it's nice and easy. Check this box and give it a name. In this case, display text, something like that. Now, when I compile the blueprint, it appears here in the variables list, and I can access it inside the blueprint itself. Drag in the display text, and you can set the color and opacity of any um, aspect of your widgets by using the set color and opacity node. The input is a structure for color and opacity, which you can break by right clicking on it and selecting split structure pin. This will break it up into the structure and the color rules. Let's then break the color again to access the RGB values for color and the alpha value for transparency. I'm going to set the RGB to 1 so that the text is white and the transparency to 0 so that it is invisible when we begin play. Now that it's not visible, we also need to change this boolean, which is here to control our animations. It is only true when the animation, sorry, when the text is visible. So drag in the boolean and set it to false because we've just made the text invisible when we begin play. Now when I hit play, the text doesn't show anymore. So our animations that we set up in the last video uh, will contain will, will be called from the player character when they interact with an object. On their own, they will do absolutely nothing, but we're done with the widget for now. The widget on our screen is controlled by this HUD controller blueprint. This is an actor that we just placed in the level, which, main, which on begin play will check whether there is a huddled widget for the player, and if not, will create it. When it does create this widget, we can use this to pass the information about this widget, a reference to it, directly to the player. So the player is going to need a variable to store that information in. Open up the third person character and create a new variable in the third person character blueprint. This is going to be the player HUD reference. And set this. You can set this to be of type widget, but then you will need to cast to use it. If you set it to the specific type of widget that your crosshair is, then you won't need to do any casting and you'll be able to call functions directly from this reference. So set it to be of type widget crosshair. Now in your HUD controller blueprint, when you create the HUD and add it to the player's screen, we're just going to add an extra step in here where we get the player character, sorry, player pawn, cast to the third person character blueprint so we're saying get a reference to the player pawn is it the third person character and if it is then we can use the reference to it as if it was a third person character I know it's going to be because that's how this blueprint is set up now that we have a reference to the third person character we can access this variable that we created inside it set player HUD reference and what are we going to set it to? Well, that's this newly created widget that's just been displayed on the player's screen. That's the crosshair and the text inside it. If you want, you can also use the cast failed node here to create error messages. So this will uh, throw out an error if the player pawn is not the third person character, or you could drive different logic to display different HUDs. Like if you instead have instead of a character, you had a vehicle. Instead of adding the crosshair, you could add a vehicle display with your fuel and speed, etc. So that's the HUD controller. This is the third person character. Now when it creates the HUD, the third person character reference will be set. In order to uh, test that, we can simply um, implement a modification to the interaction system that we set up. Currently, you can interact only with objects that implement the interaction interface that we've set up earlier in this series. Um, but in order to actually 
display text, we're going to need to be able to detect if we're looking at an object that we can interact with. And that's as simple as using the true and false branches of this does implement interface node here. So the raycast comes out of the center of the screen when we hit F. If it hits an object that we can interact with, it will report back as true and try to interact with it. If it hits an object that we cannot interact with, we want to uh, hide the text. So let's get that reference to the player HUD and call the show int show text function. So if we could be interacting with something, then that's true. And if it's false, then we want to hide the text, which was our hide text function, which we set up in the last video. So this is not going to be um, uh, how the system is going to look in the end. This is just to test it now and make sure that everything is set up. When I press play and try to interact with something like, say, this door here that I know I can interact with, the text should appear. But if I try to interact with something like this wall over here that I can't interact with, the text will disappear. So the functions are now being called from the widget even though it's the player character that has the reference. If I interact with the wrong thing, the message goes away. If I interact with the correct thing, the message appears. The next step will be to set up an automation so that this text is controlled simply by looking at an object rather than me, the player, having to push any keys.